Hello everyone, welcome to So Janelle. I'm your host Janelle So. If you've been following us, this is our third show during quarantine and we are now going into week seven of stay at home or shelter in place orders. And we have been working so hard to give you the necessary tools that you need in order to stay so informed, giving you some latest COVID numbers, um, analysis from different experts as well as protocols to give you uh, information and relevant and up-to-date information as well. Also on the show, we have been giving different financial advice on some mortgage relief. We have also discussed a stimulus bill um, and how you can take advantage of that or how you can avail of uh, some of uh, those um, help that, yeah, that we need. A lot of us need help right now as well. In terms of relationships, we spoke to a licensed marriage and family therapist not too long ago to give us information on how couples can stay together and battle stress together during this time of COVID. Because you know, it's been very stressful for parents who work from home. I go through that as well with children at, at home as well. So homeschooling them or distance learning. We have more tools for you. And if you missed any of the previous shows, make sure that you catch us on YouTube. Also, I know that a lot of you uh, tell me that you don't have TFC. So make sure you catch us on YouTube. Uh, we are at youtube.com slash sojanelle where we also stream commercial free the full show so tell your friends and family about it if they don't have TFC they can catch us on Wednesdays on YouTube at 8 p.m. Pacific so that's www.youtube.com slash sojanelle make sure you subscribe as well and for others we have been posting some of our previous shows starting from season one on another YouTube channel and that is youtube.com slash Sojanelle TV. So if you want a, a respite or a break from the dark and, um, and sad news that we have about COVID, we have some inspiring segments and stories for you on www.youtube.com slash Sojanelle TV. Now on the program, we have more tools to give you. First up, we're going to tackle this because this is close to the hearts of Filipinos. We are an immigrant community. What is President Trump now saying about immigration? Here is an immigration expert to take us through that. Joining us via Skype uh, this afternoon is attorney Stephanie C, a partner at C. Smith Law. She has been practicing immigration law for 14 years now. Attorney Stephanie C, hello and welcome to So Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. Glad to be here. Yes, thank you for making time for us because I know that a lot of people now are worried about the executive order that President Trump has recently signed regarding immigration. This executive order basically just applies to immigrant visa applicants um, who are currently outside the United States or who, who will be basically be outside the United States as of April 24th, uh, 2020, and that they don't have a valid um, immigrant visa stamp yet and or they don't have a, another sort of travel document such as an advanced parole. So it's very limited on who this actually impacts. And obviously, a lot of Filipinos are worried because we're an immigrant, we're an immigrant community. Um, and I know that this executive order, aside from what you just mentioned, it seems to me that there's a lot of exemptions outside of that circle. Absolutely, there's a ton of exemptions, and I think the biggest exemptions that applies to the Filipino community would be the healthcare worker exemption. So, if you were coming in here as a, you had a nurse that has an immigrant visa application that's pending. Um, this doesn't apply to you. Even if you're outside the United States, this also doesn't apply to spouses of U.S. citizens or current green card holders. There's a lot of other exemptions, but those are the primary ones that apply to the Filipino community. What would be the main takeaway of this? Because a lot of people are panicking. Because in the first place, why put an executive order like this if there's really not very many people that are going to get affected? The political landscape that we have right now is basically fostering this executive order. But really, what the advice that we have for people is don't panic. This really only applies to under 5% of my clients. Um, if you were a non-immigrant here on H-1Bs or on J-Bs, this doesn't apply to you. If you're an immigrant applicant that's, doing, that's already in the United States on an adjustment of status, this doesn't apply to you. 
So uh, this is very narrowly tailored. So do not panic. Uh, for investors visa, it still it also doesn't apply. It it, it is still uh, possible to apply for an EB five immigrant visa application and also the E2 visa, which is a non-immigrant visa application. I know that there's a lot of Filipinos that also qualify for the O visa, like extraordinary ability. Does that also impact them? Correct. This does not impact them. Any non-immigrant visa, such as the O's, the H1Bs, J students, this does not impact them at this time. Um, there is a provision in this executive order that says that um, the Department of Labor and the Department of Homeland Security is supposed to make recommendations to the president to see what changes we might make to the non-immigrant visa uh, system. Um, they're supposed to give that in 30 days. But as of right now, this executive order should not impact non-immigrants. Well, this executive order only uh, is uh, for the next 60 days. It is, but it does allow for the extension based if the president believes it's necessary. Right. So is this an indication also of um, the administration really clamping down on the undocumented immigrants? No, I mean, this really impacts more the people that are trying to do it legally. Um, this does not impact the, the illegal immigrants at this time. I mean... You know, I think in general, there's been a clampdown by this administration on immigration in general, whether it's legal or illegal immigrants. Uh, and I think this is just another step towards that. Right. And I like what you're saying. Don't panic. Do not, because this only really applies to a small sliver of cases. Well, thank you so much. And um, I, we will be calling on you should there be any changes. Correct. I, I'd be more than happy to come back and discuss any changes um, that they might they might implement the next few weeks. Thank you for sharing your afternoon with us here on Sojournal. If you're just joining us, we are now introducing our second segment on the show. But if you missed our first segment or even some of our preview shows, make sure that you catch us online. We are now on always on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash Sojanelle, where you can watch the show commercial free on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific. Please join us for that. We have also started posting some of the extended versions of our interviews, giving you tools on how to cope during this time of global pandemic. So we are on at www.youtube.com slash Sojanelle. Please make sure you subscribe. Back here on the show, Rod Mercado of Financial Rescue, serving the community for 11 years now, joins us once again to come to our rescue. Hi Rod, kamusta kayo dyan? Oh, mabuti naman. Sa ngayon ay, um, siyempre, sinusunod namin yung shelter in place. So, lahat ng empleyado ko ngayon ay nagtatrabaho mula sa kanilang bahay. Makalipas lang ito, you know, um, we will be very busy again helping people, especially yung mga kababayan natin na malaki ang problema sa kanilang financials. Yes, a lot of people have been affected financially, emotionally, physically, and there's no end in sight. And so I think it's time for the community to come together and help uh, do our part in, um, in beating COVID. Number one thing to do uh, in your list is social distancing. Oh, ayan ang napaka-importante yan. Siguro yung dami ng mga taong maapektuhan ay hindi naman madidiminish. But at least, hindi man sila magsasabay-sabay to the point that, you know, yung mga healthcare uh, providers ay hindi sila ma-accommodate. So, talaga napaka-importante ng uh, social distancing. I know, Rod, and I know that another thing that we should all be mindful of during this time is uh, common human decency. And one example is not to do price gouging. Ito yung kapag yung isang business ay tinataas nila yung presyo nila, especially for mga commodities, ng more than 10%, right? So, nako-consider yun. And remember, if you do that, you're committing a crime sa California particularly. Kung tayo ay may mga... Uh, na-encounter ng mga providers na ganyan ang ginagawa, pwede natin i-report sila, no? I-contact mo yung department, 1-800-593-8222 or bisitahin yung online, dcba.lacounty.gov As sabi nga nila, pagdating daw ng crisis, dun mo din nakikita na ang mga tao, they tend to go together and, and, and help each other. 
And this is the right time. Bayanihan ba yung tawag natin doon? Yes, Ro, tama ka dyan. Tulong-tulong. This is called bayanihan. In our Filipino culture, we all are responsible for each other. One thing that we can do is regularly check in on some of our neighbors, perhaps, some people in our community that are that we know are at high risk. Itong grupo ng mga elderly, correct? And dito yung pagkakatawin ngayon na gumamit tayo ng social media. Like yung ginagawa natin ngayon, nag skype tayo, uh, para nakakausap natin sila, nabibigyan natin sila ng, ng lakas ng loob, at nachi-check nga natin sila daily, are they okay, you know, what else we can do for them. Importante yun eh. Guys, adversity really brings us together in very powerful ways, and Rod, I know that you are no stranger to this, despite the 11 years of financial rescue, helping, rescuing, people who need help in times of trouble. You also have been a very active member and uh, and uh, officer of the Lions Club. Yes, hanggang ngayon, no? nasa Lions po kami. At uh, maski nga ngayon, napospone din yung convention ng Lions Club. Pero hindi natatapos ang pagsiserve ng Lions Club. Uh, pero nasa organization ka man o hindi, may pagkakataon pong makatulong tayo ngayon. And so if there's one thing that I'm taking from, from this interview, one word is serving, serving others. But also let us not forget that we also shouldn't be embarrassed, shouldn't be shy to ask for help. So if you need help, make sure you have people to call, your friends and relatives, even on Facebook, you can send messages. If you are in financial trouble right now, call Financial Rescue because they will come to your rescue for sure. Rod, this is a free call, no obligation consultation, correct? And that's right, you know. Ngayon pa lang, while it's still early, look into your finances, see how we can help you, you know, or see how you can help yourself. And kung kailangan nyo talaga ng tulong, nandito kami, tumawag lang po kayo sa amin. Uh, anytime, may mga tuloy-tuloy po ang aming operations. Thank you for that, Rod. Hello guys, welcome back to my new studio. Today I want to talk about social distancing. We have to stay away from people because of the coronavirus. So what does that mean for kids like me? What can't we do? We can't go to school to learn or see our friends. Not even our share day. We can't go to dance class or art class. We can't even have sleepovers. That's so lame. We can't even go out to buy toys or books. <clears throat> I miss them all. So wait, what can we do? We can have loads of fun at home. We can play as many games and puzzles as we want. We can get all our toys out of all of the boxes. And we can leave them all over the house. One of my favorite things about quarantine is my new school, where mommy is my best teacher, and then daddy's my second best teacher. Sorry, daddy. Mm. Don't worry about them all. As long as you had a credit card, you can still order books and toys on Mommy's computer. The best thing about quarantine is spending time with our families. So remember, it's not so bad in quarantine, right? Thank you all for watching. And please subscribe. That's my daughter, four-year-old Lily. You know, we're all trying to do our best in this quarantine going on week seven now. We're trying to learn some things. We're trying to take advantage of time to bond with family. I know it's been hectic for a lot of parents out there, including ourselves, uh, husband and wife. My husband and myself were both working from home with two toddlers, my four-year-old and my one-year-old. And so we thought of like just uh, doing some of these videos Lily loves 
to talk on camera. She has her own YouTube channel. We have started that. It's uh, Life with Lily. So make sure uh, if you can subscribe to her videos as well. Just hoping to share some good vibes uh, in this time of a global pandemic where there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of uh, sorrow, sadness, um, uncertainty, and stress. So we are hoping that those one minute, two minute videos of Lily can just, you know, help make you smile during the day. Meanwhile, speaking of a lot of stresses, we as Asians, as an Asian community, have more things to worry about. Uh, one of the top most uh, important things that we need to be aware of is the growing anti-Asian um, sentiment, racism that's happening right now, fueled by a lot of this pandemic and a lot of this misinformation about coronavirus. To discuss that with us today is NAFA National Chair, Brendan Flores. Hello, Brendan. Welcome to So Janelle, and thanks for joining us once again. Pleasure to be here. What is the situation and really how bad is it? Anti-Asian sentiment, it's not really new, um, but because of the coronavirus, it's more amplified, right? So let me offer a couple of perspectives based on the reports that I'm reading, that I'm receiving. Um, actually, according to Representative Judy Chu, there's an average of about, of about 100 reports of Asian American targeted crimes daily, which is just, just enormous, right? It's, it's rather unsettling because there's also reporting over a thousand similar hate crimes in just two weeks from March 19 to April 2nd. And as a matter of fact, during the first week, um, the most prevalent types of harassment, you got verbal harassment for about 67%, shunning about 23%, and even physical assault at, at 10%. So it's, it's absolutely prevalent, which is really sad. Um, we're also hearing from the reports, I mean, you got people being spat upon, racial slurs, um, and, and what's even concerning, gun sales are, are spiking, are spiking up. And because they said it's for self-defense and they're genuinely scared. For people out there that are sheltered in place, sheltered in their homes, they, they're quarantined, on, they, they don't go out, especially Filipinos. Some of them might be thinking, oh, there's more things to worry about than this. Why should I care? Well, first of all, I mean, no one deserves to live in fear, you know? And, and what's surprising of those reporting that we're hearing about, believe it or not, 61% of them were non-Chinese. Right. So it firmly validates that this is an issue across all Asian American segments. So in reality, whether we agree this with, with it or not, Asians are being singled out because of, you know, where, where the coronavirus originated. And there's a huge impact in our community. There's a huge impact in businesses, and we've seen it. And I know that NAFA is at the forefront of all this, uh, Brandon. For NAFA National, we'll start with that first. What are you doing as an organization to combat this or to, to face this, this challenge? So obviously, we're, we're making sure that we're available, we're accessible. Um, you know, we, we take those reports very seriously. And we also partner with many organizations out there. Right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and what's, what's amazing is a lot of Asian American communities and even non-Asians or allies are really coming together, putting together workshops um, to really help educate you know, the broader masses so they understand exactly what they could possibly do should situations like this arise. How can we help? How can we answer the call? And the training that I was reading today, which is really good and I absolutely recommend it, it's by an organization called Hollow Back. It's a nonprofit organization. And they partner with many Asian American communities out there, like AAJC, and they provide workshops and training. So they, they came up with five methods of, of how do you help somebody out, right, if you're a bystander. So, for example, the first one, they call it five Ds. Okay. One or first is distract, right? So it's an indirect approach. So start a conversation with that individual who's being targeted. So in that way, they know that they're with somebody. The second one is delegate, right? Delegating meaning look for someone of authority to intervene, like a police officer or a store manager. If you're on a place of business or a bus driver, um, has to be can call the police. Third is delay, right? Meaning check in with that person who's being harassed, see if they need anything. If you need to walk with them or keep them company, do that. Fourth 
is direct, right? Get help, you know, get out of there, obviously. You know, the last thing, document it. You know, videos are very helpful, but of course, you gotta be very cautious because you got you need permission to technically uh, from the person being harassed if you were to take videos. Unfortunately, Asian Americans are, are losing courage, right? Um, and, and again, it's okay to share your story because if it happened to you, it could happen to your sister, it could happen to your mother, it could happen to your brother, your significant other, so you do play a role in making sure that you're telling the story. All right. Well, thank you so much for making time for us today, Brendan. More power to you. Back here on the show, a lot of college students or high school, senior high school students, along with their parents, are worried about college admission. So we are um, living in unprecedented times and we need advice on what to do. If you are in that category, a uh, high school senior going into college or set, submitting your applications, or if you are a parent or parents worried about your, col uh, your college student's future, future college student's future, uh, we have help for you right about now. Welcome to So Janelle, Filipino college counselor or high school counselor from the Bay Area, Patrick Lorenzo. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, apparently, Patrick, uh, there's a lot of confusion right now because of the uncertainty. Obviously, these are unprecedented times and a lot of people, especially the high schoolers uh, going into college plus their parents, uh, don't know what's going on. Let's break it down into three basics the standardized, te standardized testings. Let's start with that. What's going on? The concern is about the test being canceled. You know, so students uh, who may have registered for exams, uh, you know, for April, May, and, and June, they found those exams to be uh, canceled. So, you know, families are, are concerned and worried about uh, whether or not, uh, how are they going to apply? What are they going to do? How are colleges going to evaluate this? And so uh, what has been announced uh, along with the cancellations is that uh, moving forward uh, in the fall, uh, there will be some additional exams that will be included, uh, as well as the possibility of there being uh, online versions uh, of these tests, meaning that uh, students could take them at home. Many colleges have actually uh, have changed their policy to adjust. Uh, there's a growing list of schools that have become test optional. So that means that uh, students who are worried or concerned about whether or not they can take the test or whether or not they're concerned they might only be able to take one, that colleges will exercise flexibility and be understanding that if you are unable to take the exams or submit scores that you think are not reflective of who you are, colleges will be flexible in how they evaluate these applications. Let's talk about the second thing, which is deadlines, because I know that college application for a lot of the universities have a deadline. What typically happens with some schools is that they have two deadlines. Some schools have an early deadline and some schools have a regular uh, deadline. And those deadlines tend to fall in November. And then you have the, the deadlines that happen in January. So for example, you know, being that we're in California, using the UCs and the CSUs as an example, uh, they have a deadline of November 30th. Okay. Uh, now, again, we don't know what's going to happen yet in the fall, uh, but again, since they are going to be uh, test optional, if students are unable to take that, uh, that that's not something they need to, to worry about. I think uh, we're in a situation where we may have to wait until what happens uh, as the situation unfolds and what happens in the fall, whether or not colleges will adjust. This could also pertain to, uh, to seniors as well. Some seniors might be wondering if they can still apply there are some schools who have extended their deadline or will extend their deadline. But for the juniors, I think uh, we still have to, to wait and see what happens. But I think that we can expect that deadlines can also be uh, adjusted in order to be accommodating. Let's talk about that test optional thing because some students are also alarmed because some of them um, didn't really do well maybe the past school years and they were hoping to do well on the tests to help pull up their grades, uh, to help uh, push their um, ability to be admitted to the college that they want or university that they want. Uh, your thoughts on that, Patrick? The test scores are, are one element uh, with, with what they use to evaluate students. Uh, the GPA, uh, the activities that they participate in are, are gonna be things that are going, to, are going to be a part of that. And I believe that uh, it's likely that in their application, they will, they will give students an opportunity to perhaps 
um, expand um, and explain. Now, there are a lot of other schools that um, have other application platforms in which uh, they may have a letter recommendation. They may have additional writing components that students may submit as part of their application. So that means that even though students are unable to submit test scores or they're concerned about test scores, there are colleges that look beyond uh, the test score. Uh, we've discussed the deadlines, we've, uh, we've discussed the, um, the testing, and then you mentioned something that I was going to ask you about, which I think you already expounded on, the GPA. Because now some schools are doing pass or fail, some schools are doing credit, no credit, and some schools are still doing the letter grades. Should that be a concern for students and their parents? As, uh, as best as I can, I, I, I would want uh, students to uh, to try to be focused on themselves and to do the best they can, but and recognize that it's important to show grace uh, with each other, show grace uh, with yourself, uh, with your family, because this is a tough situation. Uh, I think students have to recognize that uh, it's okay uh, if it's tough and you struggle and it's not it's not the best version of you. Because again, uh, the colleges will be will exercise flexibility and you have more options than you might realize. As parting words, are there, is there anything else that you can advise students in how they can make their application stand out? You know, what I would tell students is, you know, instead of trying to think about how to, to stand out, how to be different, how to be unique, uh, I, would, I would have students take a step back, reflect, and look inward. Think about your values. Think about your strengths, your talents, your gifts, your abilities. Think about all the different things that make up who you are. And, and focus on that, uh, because ultimately, colleges want to know and hear about who you are as an individual, what is your story. Uh, what, they don't want you to be something that you're not. Continue to be who you are. That's even more important. Think about what makes you happy. Think about those things. I know it's difficult in this particular circumstances to be thinking about that because you're concerned about all these other things, but those are beyond our control. The things you have inside are things that you control. Those thoughts, those ideas. Uh, those those values, uh, hold on to those things. Those are the things that matter most. And that's where I would tell students to put their energy into. We hope you're able to gather valuable tips uh, to help you uh, survive this pandemic here on the show. And that is our utmost goal. Once again, we have extended versions of interviews for you where you can get more information, more details on several topics. We are on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash And if you want a break from what's going on right now, and if you want just to be entertained and enlightened and encouraged and inspired, we have previous shows that are now on YouTube starting way back in 2017 when we started www.youtube.com slash TV. And if you want one more YouTube channel that you should follow, uh, please try to follow my four-year-old YouTube channel. Her name is Lily and her YouTube channel is Life with Lily. Make sure you catch her there. For now, I'm your host Janelle So and this has been So Janelle.